There are two things that everyone should know about the paintings of Leonardo da Vinci. They help you to appreciate both his genius and his masterpieces. Firstly, Leonardo did not paint in lines. He did not add color to the line sketches. The Florentine master had realized that there are no lines in nature. The human mind imposes them as it notices sensory changes. Nature does not present a borderline between the window and the window sill. That is how our minds organize our perceptions, which is fortunate because otherwise all that we could see would be a rather meaningless mush, much like the vision of a newborn infant or a lower animal. If you look closely at the painting by Leonardo, you will see that its colors overlap. One gradually gives way to another so that they again form a new line in our mind. But on the canvas itself, there is an intermingling. We call this technique shades, after the Italian word for smoky. The other essential characteristic of Leonardo's art is that he did not believe that there were lines in time either. One moment constantly bleeds into another. It is only later, in memory and narrative, that we can distill them into discrete sequences. Now, you are ready to appreciate, in a new way, a picture that we have all seen. It is the most reproduced work of Leonardo's Christian art, perhaps of all of Christian art, and this is The Last Supper. Without a copy of the painting in front of you, you cannot fully appreciate the physical shades of the colors, but narrative can preach the gospel by relating its emotional shades. Leonardo, who was a genius in physically depicting his psychological emotions, he wanted to choose to paint the pivot in the narrative of the Last Supper, the moment where Jesus announces that his betrayer is with him at the table. Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper painting is one of the most famous pieces of fine art in history. The painting was painted from 1495 to 1498 and is a fresco secco painting. It captures in a single scene the episode in the New Testament where Jesus tells his disciples that one of them will betray him as told in the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 21 through 32. Leonardo wanted to preserve Christ as the epicenter of this episode in the Gospel narrative as it relates to Christ's passion and death. Furthermore, da Vinci painted this artwork under the influence of the Renaissance cultural period he was in, as well as the psychoanalytic iconographical and formalist factors that played into the painting. The cultural and intellectual movement of Renaissance humanism, which emphasized literature, art, and civilization of classical Greece and Rome, was a factor in Leonardo painting The Last Supper. From left to right of Jesus, the apostles depicted our Bartholomew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Andrew. Bartholomew has brown hair and blue clothes. James has brown hair and brown clothes, and Andrew is wearing brown clothes with a blue sash. All apostles have a look of surprise. In the painting, the next group of three apostles from left to right are Judas Iscariot, Peter, and John the Evangelist. Peter looks angry and has a knife pointed away from Jesus. The knife may be a reference of him attacking Jesus' accusers in the Garden of Gethsemane. John appears to faint from extreme emotion or swoon. Judas, infamous for his betrayal, has an interesting look. He looks shadowy as he is clutching a small bag. This is clearly a reference of Judas betraying Jesus for the 30 pieces of silver. In the middle, of course, is Jesus Christ. In the painting, there is a window behind Christ's head and it is in a shape of a halo, symbolizing his holiness. Starting from right to left of Jesus, the painting depicts the Apostle Thomas, James, son of Zebedee, and Philip. Thomas is very upset and has a raised index finger. This very possibly references the Doubting Thomas episode in the Gospel of John, where Thomas at first refused to believe Jesus had rose from the dead without absolute proof. But then, the risen Jesus appears to him and tells him to put his finger in his side, where he had been pierced on the cross. James looks dumbfounded with his arms in the air. Philip appears perplexed and has inquiries. The final group of three shown in the painting are Matthew, Jude Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot. Simply put, Matthew and Jude are both turned to Simon to see if he can answer their questions. As for the formal analyses of the artwork, to start with, the shape is 2D. 
There are geometric lines used in the painting. There are many realistic lines formed by way of the rectangular openings on the walls. The windows are also made up of geometric lines as well as the lines that create the depth of the building everyone is sitting in. Additionally, there are implied lines. The disciples facing Jesus, and Jesus being the focal point, clearly creates implied lines from the disciples' faces to Jesus' entire body. Lastly, the space of the artwork is one point linear perspective. Jesus' head is the vanishing point in conjunction with the backlit open window behind. In terms of balance, the artwork is very symmetrical. The visual weight is very equally distributed on both sides of the painting that is divided between the implied line that vertically goes through the very middle of the painting. Additionally, there are patterns and, and repetitions of shapes on the walls and ceiling that reinforce the already mentioned implied line. The directional force, of course, is towards Jesus. All of the disciples looking at and facing Jesus in turn makes the reader look at Jesus who is the focal point. Next, as for value, shading was used for the walls. The texture is tactile, meaning you can physically feel it. Visually, one can tell Jesus and his disciples' his hair is soft. In terms of iconography, Charles M. Rosenberg explains that in The Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci uses different postures and gestures for Judas to separate him from the rest of the disciples as to separate the traitor from the faithful. For example, Judas' profile is cast into shadow. This symbolically expresses the darkness of his soul. Next, the left-handed group to Jesus represents John and Peter, one with Jesus and his family at the crucifixion, and one angrily attacks Jesus' persecutors in the Garden of Gethsemane, respectively. These two events, coupled with Judas' actions, focus on the betrayal and passion of Christ. Additionally, Jesus' triangular pose references the Trinity, the Christian theology that teaches that God is the Father, the Son, which is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, often depicted as a dove because of Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, Mark chapter 1 verse 10, Luke chapter 3 verse 22, and John chapter 1 verse 32, which is three persons and one being. Lastly, Jesus' outstretched arms references the man of sorrows, the sufferer for the salvation of mankind at the crucifixion. In terms of socio-political context, the High Renaissance, which lasted from 1490s to the 1520s, where architects, poets, and philosophers reconnected with the style and ambitions of ancient Greek and Roman civilization. Artists invented new techniques and new materials to transform the concept of art from its medieval symbolism to create some of the greatest works the world has ever seen. As far as the Renaissance cultural period goes, Alberi and Weiss discuss how in 15th century Florence, the birthplace of the Renaissance, most Last Supper depictions of the day were often executed in a historical event fashion rather than the religious Eucharistic tradition of the Renaissance period. They convey that Leonardo's, who was a product of 15th century Florence, Italy, Last Supper painting, reflected the Renaissance tradition of painting on the walls of refectories and displaying the actual event of Christ sharing his last meal with his disciples, which seemingly have its roots in 14th century Florence. Additionally, da Vinci's Last Supper is influenced by a cultural of urban sponsors who were interested in paintings with relatively significant artistic value. This tradition caused Florence artists such as Leonardo to emphasize the historical meal itself rather than the sacramental religious ceremony. This was to stay as true as possible to the events as told in the Gospels. When it comes to patronage, this was integral to the Renaissance because if you could afford it, your civic duty demanded that you contribute to the beauty and harmony of the city. Also, if a wealthy patron donated a chapel or all work to the church, it was their ticket to heaven. A person like da Vinci would have been commissioned by the public and the state to create the Last Supper. In conclusion, Leonardo's Last Supper is one of the greatest paintings in the history of humankind. It is a piece of fine art that can be appreciated by both Christians and non-Christians alike for its supreme cultural impact. Its achievement has been and will continue to be treasured by humans throughout the ages. This is my bibliography with a list of all my sources.
thank you all very much for your time.